It's a great day. My name is Shay Brown, the Happy Entrepreneur, and welcome to the Happy Entrepreneur Show, the number one business development and revenue-focused late-night show in the country where we're on a mission. And our mission really is to inspire. Our mission is to empower. And our mission is to provide you, the entrepreneur, the hardworking individual, with all of the resources that are necessary to execute, you know I'm about to say, that big, 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 big vision you have for the people you were called to serve. And today on this episode, we have the one and only Dr. Tabitha Russell, who's here. What's going on, Dr. Tabitha Russell? How are you? I am fantastic so much. Uh, thank you so much, Shay, for allowing me to be here on today. I am super excited to be here on your show, The Happy Entrepreneur Show. Well, we're excited to have you here. And I know we're going to be talking about wealthy mindsets lead to le uh, legacies. And I I'm just curious, now before we get started, you know, why are folks today, no matter what age, why are they still struggling with being able to spend less than they make? And I think I read somewhere that 76 or 80 percent, I think it was 76 percent of Americans today are still living paycheck to paycheck. So, so, so if you can take a moment and talk about what are the challenges, what are the people, the, the challenges people have with just having the mindset to create wealth? Yeah, that's a, a great question. Thank you so much for asking. Um, what I find today is the reason why people struggle so much with living paycheck to paycheck and really getting beyond that barrier by itself is that they haven't learned how to overcome the way that they were raised. Let's be honest, not everybody was born with a silver spoon in their mouth as the saying goes. However, I've seen where because of the lack of financial literacy, people really struggle with not knowing how the times are changing. We know that we just recently came out of the pandemic and in some ways there's still residual effects of the pandemic still going on. With that being said, it exposed and illuminated the fact that we've had so many challenges with people with their finances and right now it's happening more so than ever before. And so the pandemic just really shined the light on the fact that financial literacy is still the number one thing that needs to be taught in schools and it needs to become a household conversation. So because it's not something that we talk about regularly, it's not something that we're taught is the main reason why people still struggle with it. And I find that people um, don't even know in some cases that they need it. And so when we say that people are still struggling, like 76% is a staggering number. That means that only a small segment of people really know how to handle and manage their finances well. What do you say to the, to the grandmothers out there? I'll say that. Or the single parent that's out there that's trying to take care of, of loved ones uh, they're trying to stretch what they already have. Um, and, and just from a mindset perspective, um, and they're like, listen, there just isn't enough money coming in. And now you want me to try to save some money. And, and we're gonna talk to the other folks. Don't, don't worry. There's some other folks out there, but just to that person that's tuning in right now, that's watching and saying, I do want to leave a legacy, Dr. Tabitha. I, I, I want to make sure my grandkids are taken care of. I want to make sure my children have everything they need. I'm taking care of a cousin or, or a loved one passed away and I'm, I've inherited their kids. Whatever the case may be, here's the question to the person that's out there that's listening and saying, how can I get my mindset right when they're just in their own mind, not enough money coming in to meet some of the basic needs? Ooh, I know that's kind of unfair, question. but hopefully you can help them out. Oh, yeah, it's it's a good question because that is real life. Like I know and have seen lots of people that still have those challenges today. So I will say, first of all, that it's not too late. It doesn't matter what you have going on, where you are in your financial life, that there's still time for you to be able to make a difference and to change some things. But it starts first with you making a decision that I no longer like the way that my situation is right now. And I 
am vowing to make a decision to now do something about it, meaning that you start today, start laying a new foundation. And sometimes we have to tear down those old beliefs, those old habits that we had that's no longer serving us. And the reason why some of us have struggled with it so long is that we've uh, decided not to let go of those old habits, meaning that it, it wasn't working for you then. It didn't work for those that taught you it and you've adopted it and it's still not working. So now's the time to do something about it, right? So I tell most people that um, you sometimes cannot manage what you can't see. And so it starts with creating that budget, really uh, laying out the foundation of what your finances are. So you account for everything that comes in. And more importantly, you account for everything that you're spending for the whole month. And once you can finally see it, now you can make an informed decision on what needs to happen in order for you to be able to change those habits that's no longer serving you. Most of the time we have an idea of what needs to be done, but we never implement it and put it into practice because it's just a thought and it becomes reality and you, you're able to put it into action when you write it down and now you can see it all and then you can kind of go from there. Well said. Now to the other individuals sitting out there, they're saying, whoa, this is great. I mean, I've got control of things, but I'm a little curious what her philosophy is, what her mindset is, that is Dr. Tabitha Russell, who we're talking to now, um, regarding do I start paying down some of my debt over here? Do I put some money, more money into my retirement over here? And I know this might be an unfair question, but just at least from a mindset perspective, and they're like, man, one day they tell me, put as much money away in your 401k. The next day they're saying, put every dime away and pay down debt. And then the next day they're saying, no, 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 build your savings up first. Um, and it, it can be overwhelming. It really can, but you're here. You're the expert. You're the money makeover mogul, which we'll talk about a little bit later. And I'm just curious on what your philosophy is and what your thought is for the person that has some money there, but they got a little debt over here and they want to save for retirement over here, but they also want to continue to build that nest egg beyond three months that they have already saved. What's the mindset? What, what do you share with folks that you come across in that situation? That's right. So because we've heard so many things about finances over the years, mm -hmm. I would say that we all need to be good at diversifying ourselves, meaning that why can't we do it all? Why can't we invest for retirement? Why can't we put away some for savings as well as building that emergency fund? So with that being said, we learn how to put some money into all of these different places where at some point we can have money working for us. So just imagine this scenario. If you have debt today, a great goal would be that you work towards paying that off first and foremost first and foremost, rather. And with you doing that, the money now that you would have had to pay on those debts, you can now use that and put some away in your 401k so you can increase that amount there. You can also build your savings account as well as your emergency fund because the two should be separate. As well as now, let's talk about taking it a step further and figuring out how we can make our money work for us, meaning that we can now look at leveraging maybe potentially a business, something that you're already innately good at in order for it to be able to make money for you and possibly give you a great return so that you can further help to diversify yourself. But first things first, we know that based upon our economy today, it's not going to get potentially any cheaper for us to live our everyday lives, right? <laughs> so the more debt that you carry, you're actually spending uh, more money potentially than you could have to put towards uh, your retirement or your savings and investments and different things like that. So with you having debt out there, that's really not your friend. 
Now, I do know that some may challenge me on the fact that there's good debt and there's bad debt, which I agree with. So you have to determine what's the best course of action for each person. And sometimes that can be a little different, meaning that um, what may work for me potentially may not work for you because it's not a one and done type of scenario that's going to be best. But I will say the more that we can afford to diversify ourselves, the more that we set a solid foundation and we fortify ourselves in the event something happens. So that way, if it is indeed an emergency, you have money allocated for that. Your savings account could be slash that retirement fund that we don't touch, that we put it away uh, potentially in something that's going to help us to gain some interest on it. And then you have um, your accounts where potentially you start to diversify for vacations and other things like that or for the business. So there's lots of ways that you should do this, but the more that you can diversify yourself, the better off you are in the long run. I love it. Now folks want to know a little bit about who is Dr. Tabitha Russell? Uh, what's her backstory, Shay? What led her in the defining moment that led her to be so passionate, inspiring women to go from a um, employee to CEO of their life and of their business, which we'll talk about. The person that wants to make sure everyone has the right wealth mindset so they can have uh, safety and security. They can have freedom to do what they want to do. Who is this person? What is her backstory? Shay, ask the question. Yeah. Well, I'm asking the question now. Who are you? Tell us a little <laughs> bit of your backstory. We want to know the journey and that pivotal moment that you had to really lead you to doing what you're doing now. Well, I am uh, probably a statistical factor in where at one point I did not have financial literacy in my life. Like I didn't grow up where the conversation was being uh, held around the dinner table like I'm so passionately talking about today. But I will say that the way my journey started off with me having the entrepreneurial spirit at an early age. I uh, worked in corporate America well over 20 years in management, sales, as well as IT and leadership. Well, that led me to wanting to now start my own business. Well, I didn't know what I didn't know back then. And one decision uh, caused me to lose somewhere around a half million dollars, just like that. I mean, I fell flat on my face. I ultimately lost everything. So I tell people the reason why I'm so passionate with talking about financial literacy is that I've experienced it. I've experienced repossession. I've experienced foreclosure. I've experienced having to uproot my family and move and start all over again. The one thing that I knew that I was good at, if nothing else worked for me, was that I could go back to corporate America and make six figures and get some benefits, right? <laughs> but with that being said, the hard lesson that I learned in that is that we've got to make sure that we are financially sound when we say that we want to do entrepreneurship. Because the one thing that I did learn is that it's not for everybody and it's not for the faint of heart. So even though I encourage everybody to own a business because there's so many advantages that you get, like you get to vacation like a boss under the business, right? You need to learn how to live your life as a business and you get so many different advantages. But for me, it wasn't a straight road up to entrepreneurship and being able to bounce back from such a travesty in my life where I lost everything. It was not so. So the pivotal moment came when I started really uh, sitting myself down and learning about finances and learning how to diversify myself and fortify myself at the same time. Like I literally had to go back and redo my foundation starting all over again from ground zero and working my way back to a place where um, I can say now that I can help others, I can serve them, but I can serve them from a pureness out of my own experiences. What does it mean to be um, a CEO of your life? I mean, I know one of the things you do at Inside Inspired Women, which I'm encourage everyone to, to check it out, um, is you help them go from employee 
to the CEO of their business, the CEO of their life, and the CEO of their legacy. And the reason I, I asked to ask that question is that, you know, it's perfectly okay to be a nine to five millionaire. So if you're out there, by the way, it's okay. You can go to work every day, have a nine to five and still be a millionaire. But let's let's get Tabitha's view on the world. So what is that all about? Yeah. So uh, I believe that we should be a CEO in every area, starting with home. If we can have proper balance at home, everything else sometimes becomes a little bit more of a cakewalk, meaning that it's more manageable. But so many times there's so many things that we have going on in our personal lives that we've learned how to uh, put a mask on and cover it up so that we can be what we consider to be functional in the marketplace, functional when we're inter uh, when we're networking and when we're talking with other people and everything else is in a disarray. Well, a CEO of your life says that now I deal with my own personal finances. I deal with my own personal mindset. I make sure that I am uh, okay with where I am, meaning that I, I now manage my home well. Like we have open communication, open dialogue about our finances. We talk mental wellness. We practice self-care. And we do this from a standpoint of unity and oneness. And then from there, now you can, once you set your foundation over here, now you have room to expand, meaning out to a business. Because let's face it, all of it is demanding. If you have a family at home, it can be demanding, right? They want their time. They want you to be involved with what's going on and things like that. Well, in the business, you have to be involved in all of the aspects of that in order to be successful as well. So mentally, if we are not in a good place, I will say that it's okay sometimes to seek help. And so Inside Inspired Women basically deals with talking about how we now build ourselves from the inside out. I believe that women are the core, the nucleus of the family. And because we are, we handle so many hats. But I also believe that we make the greatest impact on the home because we have the ability to touch every single parts of the home from the head of the household, which is the husband, the man, as well as disseminate that same love and attention, care, nurturing abilities now to the children. Mm -hmm. And so I've learned through this process of doing this is that we now fortify ourselves in all of these areas, but it starts from the inside out. And this is why I talk about being the CEO of that. And so once you can start to manage this, now you can build on you being um, setting the good foundation and being that that solid rock. I love it. Are there affirmations that you suggest so you can have the right mindset? Because I know life is a series of being on track and off track, then you're on track, then you're off track. So I'm curious, um, you know, what one, two or three affirmations that, that you're able to use to help you stay focused, because um, you know I've, I've had I've had every budgeting app there is to have on my phone. By the way, <laughs> and I just ignore it. Um, and so, my wife and I would say, "Well, we had this budget for food this month, and well, that budget's out the window. We had this budget to go out to eat, and it's just bad sometimes." So my question is, what, what affirmations do you use, or yes. would you suggest to the listening audience, maybe one, two, or three of them that they can use to help encourage them to stay on stay on track? Mm -hmm. I would like to answer that question in two parts. Okay. One is that when you have a budgeting app, for example, we find that there's so many times that with those apps, because we have them there, we sometimes uh, get a little numb to them, right? <laughs> like, it's yeah. like, oh, you all got it over there. It's okay. I I'll look at it later. I'll check it out. That kind of stuff. So, I will say sometimes you have to redo the budget regularly because anytime you see that it's oh it's out the window, it's broke, or we went over it, that's okay. At least now you know, and that gives you an area of focus. Sometimes we try to take on so many things to where it becomes overwhelming and we do nothing about nothing. And so we just let it continue to go on even though we don't like those habits that we've created. And as far as part two of that, on the affirmations, I get up 
And I say that I'm so grateful and thankful, first of all, for everything that I have. And then I say that I am so happy and grateful for being able to serve individuals right where they are and being able to help them to make an impact for change. I also say that I'm so happy and so grateful for being able to cause someone to have a mind shift change today, meaning that uh, they're able to now be uh, refocused and recenter. And I also say that I'm so happy and so grateful to be in the space of where I can help people to learn financial literacy. Those are the three to four things that I say every single day. I have a whole another list of those, but those are the main ones that I say because I realize that it's not about me. I can be out here and I can be great, but it doesn't matter if I'm great, if I can't help somebody else be great as well. And so my mission has become that I help others learn that it doesn't matter what happened yesterday, why it happened to you or anything like that. I've come to the point of why not you, why not me to be the one to say that I've overcome that situation and now I've positioned myself to help somebody else. And so that's where my whole mind shifts, shift set has gone to because I realized that uh, we have so much more work to do. Like I, I feel like even though I've been out here and, and I've been doing this for a long time, well over 20 years, I feel like I'm still just scratching the surface on being able to help people. And I feel like I have still yet the rest of the world to impact with financial literacy and learning why we need it. And we really do need it like never before. And it's unless we do something, unless we stick a pin in it and pivot right where we are today, then it's gonna to continue to be the same thing, but we can make the difference for sure. For sure. What do you do for fun when you're not out saving the world? Oh, I love to travel. Uh, we try to take a couple of different trips a, a year um, as a family, because I believe that um, unless we do something to change the culture and the uh, face of the family, then it's going to continue to be the same way. So we plan every year to go on a really big trip. And then, of course, we do a, a few small ones every year. Like this year, we did Hawaii for a week and it was wow uh, really that sounds yeah. cool which 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 part of hawaii well we went to uh oahu and then yeah. of course we, okay. we went out and did some of the tours and the excursions but we try to take as many people that we can get together and go our average uh family trip size is about 20 people it's been wow. as many as 30 so we try to change the face of it right like if we're saying that we're out here we're teaching it no you're going to see it because we're going to be the example we're going to show others that this can be done on a budget within our means and we come back and still hit the ground running you do need to sometimes unplug all of us we need to, we need that time, right? To refocus, recenter, rejuvenate, so that we can come back and we're clear and ready to go. So yeah, that's that's my main thing. I love to do, um, as well as I love to read. I serve also as a professor. I teach Christian life coaching, and mm -hmm. so with that, I'm always reading something. It'd be nothing for me to be reading a couple of different books at a time. So that's my other fun thing I like to do. Well, what's one of the books you're reading now? I mean, we're curious. I mean, I'm, I'm an audible guy, but what's one of the books you're reading now? You can't just leave us hanging and saying you read a couple of books and we not ask that question. So I have uh, one book. It is called The Seven Money Rules for Life. It's by Miss Mary. Of course, Mary. a money book. That makes sense. That is, that is a very good book. I also have uh, two other books that I've been reading. One is the... Uh, L.E.T. presents the world's greatest speakers, the stories of the world's greatest speakers. And All right, now, shout out, that. shout out, shout out to yes, L.E.T. That's out, Leadership Experience out. Tour, for those who don't know. Shout out to Sean shout Fair. Out. You got a shout out, Sean. You got a shout out, bro. Absolutely. And I am reading my latest book. It's called Go F Yourself, Finding Faith, Fortune, and Fulfillment. 
that just came out earlier this year and it that's has the book i was waiting on that's the book i was waiting on by the way i don't know why you didn't start with that book <laughs> so i wrote this book because i realized that sometimes you got to get in people's faces to tell them that you can find faith fortune and fulfillment and the way that you do that is that it has to start with you you've got to determine what it is that you want and then once you determine that now put together a plan and just go after it so many times we sit and we wait on somebody to tell us that we're great at so many different things that will run with it where i'm saying now no you determine what you're good at you determine what you want and now go after it so it really does make a difference and that has been close to my chest since I finished it, I've been reading it and reading it and reading it because there's so many good things in there. And I get seemingly more motivation out of it every single time that I read it. Love it. Now, we have a segment here at the Happy Entrepreneur Show called Today is my January 1st. That's right. I know for those folks that tune in every night at 11 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, you can go and say those magical words. Today is is my January 1st. Doesn't that feel good? Happy New Year to you, by the way. And for those folks that are joining for the very first time, welcome to the family. We want to encourage you to go over to YouTube, connect with us on YouTube if you like it, at I am Shay Brown. It's my name, I A M, and then Shea Brown, or find us on, on the on demand streaming platform. Let's type in the podcast, The Happy Entrepreneur Show. Today is my January 1st, so you're fully aware. It represents one of our personal mantras at the show, it represents a fresh start. It represents a do over. It means our past, no matter what the past is, no longer equals the future. So my question to Dr. Tabitha Russell on the other side is when you hear those words, today is my January 1st, what do you hear and what goes through your mind? Today being my January 1 is that it's a good day for me to get a do over. It's a good day for me to have a fresh start and I'm going to put those things which are behind me and press towards the mark, whatever that mark is, meaning that I know that I have greatness on the inside. So I'm going to press into my greatness. I tell everybody to lean into your purpose, lean into what you're innately good at. And today is a good day. Let today be your January one that you continually remind yourself that you are amazing, that you are awesome, and that you can do all things through Christ that strengthens you and that you are an overcomer. Mm, said so well. Um, two questions. Number one, what type of clients is your firm working with these days, if any? And number two, how can folks best connect with you so they can stay in this conversation over and beyond the time that you and I have right now? Awesome. I work with business savvy individuals, those that have an idea or some sort of concept that they feel like that they can serve the marketplace. I work with all of those to really take that idea from just a thought to an actual concept. And those that are already in business, we help them to now expand on what it is that they're doing so that now they can diversify themselves because you will hear me talk about laying a foundation, being fortified, and uh, expanding your foundation. With that being said, we help individuals that really want to make multiple streams of income ultimately. That's what we do. And in order for somebody to connect with me, which I will be glad to do so, I have several different programs that we can help people with. One being a group program where we help them to now learn more about this whole financial uh, literacy trajectory, as well as we do one-on-ones as well. I do make time to do that also, but you can connect with me on all social media platforms at I am Dr. Tabitha. And you can also go to my website, which is drtabitharussell.com. Thank you so much, Dr. Russell, for being on the uh, Happy Entrepreneur Show. We appreciate it. You're amazing. You're incredible. So can't wait to have you back. Thank you so much. Thank you as well. And thank you. Thank you, the listener. Thank you, the viewer. Thank you, the person listening on the podcast right now. To the person that has this in your headset, you might be doing some things around the house or to you who just happen to find us. 
thank you so much. We appreciate you. Thanks for being here. Make sure you connect so we can stay in this conversation. And like I like to share, every night I, I get to share just these final words, right? And they mean so much to me. I never get tired of seeing them. Somebody get a DM, share. you ever get tired of saying it? No. I want you to know that you are spectacular. You are amazing. You are incredible that you've got so much greatness inside of you. And because you have that greatness inside you, today is your January 1st. And based on that one reason alone, your best is still yet to come. Your best is yet to come. Your best days are still ahead of you. With that being said, my name is Shay Brown, in case you forgot, the happy entrepreneur. Make it a great day, everyone. And I promise you from the bottom of my heart, We'll make some good things happen. We connect again next time. Remember, time is long. Life is short. You got to live in that moment and you got to make it count. God bless and we wish you success. Thanks a lot, Dr. Tabitha. We'll see you around. Thank you. Bye-bye, everybody. Peace. Yeah.